Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to continue from where we left off in the last episode. And before we get into that, a quick recap. So in our last episode, we went back to the backend to implement the get account by number flow. And the whole idea here is that when we enter the account number, we should be able to get the associating account. And we've achieved that if I believe. Yep, I think we did. So coming back to our front end, when we click on send money, we get this model. And the intention here is we are going to enter the account number we want to send money to. And we're going to count until it's 10 digits. Then we're going to lose focus on the input field. Then a loader icon comes down here, which shows that it's resolving the account. Then it resolves the account. So for now, the only thing we can get for an account is the username, which means it's your account because we currently have our account on the system. So yeah, we are going to make use of that. We are going to show the username as the person we are sending to. And yeah. That's what we have. So without any further ado, let's get into coding and implement this out. So back into our front end, here is the use send money hook. Because of the flow we want to achieve, we are going to need a state to handle that. So here we're going to have const data. So in regards to our state, we're going to have um, some information aside from the account number because we are trying to send money. We also need to specify the amount we want to send. So we should take note of that. And on that note, we are going to kind of define the format we are expecting. So here we're going to have the account number, which is going to be optional string because at some point it might not exist. But better still, let's just make it a string anyways. Can still have an empty string as being a string. So it works. Then also we need the amount, which is also going to be a string. And an amount is meant to be a number. However, we are interacting with an input field and an input field will always return a string. So yeah, later on we can convert the amount into number obviously, but for now we're going to be dealing with this. So after doing that, we can set a default uh, information, which is going to be empty strings for both. So yeah, we've defined the data. The next thing now is to come down here. So the name has to change so that it matches what we have here. So I'm going to replace this. Then now we can specify the value, which is going to be data.account number, then also the unchanged uh, information. So I want this unchange function to be generated such that we can use it for the amount flow as well. So as a result of that, I'm going to replace this with a function. So undo change like that. Now we can come back here to define the change or the function. So this is what we want because we are working with TypeScript anyway. So we add dot change events and what we are changing is of type HTML input elements. Okay. So the flow is quite simple. We are going to set the data and we are going to pass in the existing data. Then we are going to update the key with the new value. So that's what we are working with. And that's the flow. This would work. So the next thing we want to do is we want to track the changes that happens when we type in our account number. And to do that, we can listen to the changes using the use effect hook. So now let's do that. We can have use effects. And because we are tracking the changes with the account number, we only want to listen to the changes with account number. So if we type in the amount, which would not exist by the way, it won't matter. So let me remove the data dot amount. So here we have listing to data dot account number, which should be within an array like this. And here we want to have a function that track these changes. So we can have track account number changes like that. This is a function we are going to call. So let's create that function. Yep. So the function has been created for us. And what we want to do now is just log out the count of the account number. So here we're going to have data dot account number dot length. So we can get length for a string. So yeah, let's work with that for now. And let's test these changes before proceeding forward. So let's pull up our inspection, our console. Let's come down to console. Let's clear this out. Let's refresh once more. Let's clear again. 
So send money and a type one, I better still, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So as you can see, this is the length of 10. So at this point, we should lose focus on the input field. And let's implement that. So to implement that, we are going to use the use ref hook so as to reference the input field. So we can have input ref, which is going to be this. However, I'm going to remove the React path and just import the use ref directly. Okay, so this is what we want. And we want to pass this reference to the input props. However, I don't think we have the ref information here. So let's come back to the label input. Let's kind of extend the input props to include that. So here we're going to have and. So we're going to have uh, ref. Like this. So this is what we want to add. So we're extending the input props to include the ref. So react.ref objects into HTML input elements. So now if we come back here, we now have the ref info here. However, you can see that it was showing the warning sign, which means ref was um, kind of compulsory, which we don't want that. So I'll remove the ref back and come back to the label input and make this an optional field. So it should not be compulsory. So as a result of that, we are back to having this as normal. However, we can now have the ref info like this. I will place it here. So now back to our track, we want to check when the account number length is 10. So if account number length is equivalent to 10, we want to remove focus from the input field. So input fields.current.blow. So that's the function we want to use. So before we proceed again, let's test this out. So we type. And as you can see, the moment we enter the 10 digits, we lose the focus and the loading icon can come up here, which looks good. So coming back here, as soon as we blur the input field, we want to make a call to verify the account number. So we're going to need our loading icon here and also when we have the account number, but let's have the function first. So let's create another function here called verify account number. This is going to be an async function. So we're going to have that. So for this to verify our account number, if we come back to our postman, let's pull it up. So here is the endpoint to verify the account number, which is this get account number. So we want to come back to our utils on that network to include this. So account URL here are going to have verify account number. So base URL plus account. So here we're going to have get account by number. Cool. So in order for us to be able to store the verified information into somewhere, we also need to have a state for that. Actually, let's verify the account number first. So this is a valid account number. Our token is already expired. Let's log in. Now we have a new token. Let's update it. So yeah, I'm now using an environment for this. And now let's try this again. So we have the account number and this is the structure we are expecting. So the user ID, the email. Yep, the username did not come along with it. Yep, so the username is going to be part of the user info. However, we are only expecting the email from the user info. Yeah, let's work with this for now. So I'm going to copy all this information to define a type for the verified account number. So let's come back here. We have the account type. Actually, we can use the account type and use the email as a sample or better still, let's just create a new one. Yep, we could fix this by having an ES linked uh, configuration for this, but let's ignore that should be an issue. So let's have this as export interface. 
into account or well, let's call it verify account type. So it's going to be an extension of the account number. So extends account type. Then we can specify the email here. So email is going to be string like that. And sometimes having the full user information can also work because maybe then we have all the information we might need. But we can always improve as we can see. Let's close this and come back here. So we've defined the URL. We have our use um, ASIOS, so let's get that. So const, we get this equals to use ASIOS. So here we're going to have the ASIOS handler. Do we have a loading function here? We do. So this loading flag kicks in whenever we make a request and we can make use of that when we are trying to verify the account. So here we're going to have access to the response, which is going to be awaits ASIOS handler. And so this is going to be a post request or better still, I think the URL comes first. Yeah, the URL comes first. So let's verify the network again. So account URL, verify account number. Account URL dot verify account number. Then the method is going to be a post method. Then the payload is going to be just the account number. And the structure we are expecting is this. So yeah, we are going to have to change that. And in case you want everything to have the same flow, then you can update the name to match all rounder. So here I'm going to have the account number, which is equals to data dot account number. And finally, we need a token for this because you're expected to be authenticated to perform this operation. So after doing all this, we are expecting the account verify account type. So we can include that here. So verify account type, which is this. Then also we are going to define a state for that. So here we can have const um, account verified accounts like that. So it can be null, which makes sense. So it gave us the idea we need. And here we can check if rest, we want to set verified accounts to this. So we need to call this the moment we set this to block like that. Then now we can work with our loading. So down here, we can have the loading icon. So loading, we can, we can have loading, then verified accounts, we can have the account name equals to verified account dot email, which works. However, I think we have a loading icon. If we can see, yeah, we have the spinner. So let's try to have the spinner here. So let's see what it looks like. So by default, it's taking test white. However, because we are going to be having a white background, we're going to change that. So we are going to have the spinner. So it's actually called loader spinner, I believe. Yeah, loading spinner. Okay, we have other spinners as well. Yeah, let's work with the loading spinner. I think that looks more better. So here we're going to have, um, let's say, tests blue. 500. Okay. Let's see this work. Let's verify if it's working. Then maybe we can have a imagine top of two here. The same thing for this as well. Class name MT2. So it gives it some space. So let's verify if this works. So send money. Let's type in the account number. So no results, obviously this can be handled better, but I think we get the idea. So let's look for an account number that is actually valid. So let's copy this and let's remove this. Yep, that was quick. That was very fast. So you can add more style into this, but we all get the idea. We were able to validate the accounts. And if we go back and click this, then we get this. However, I think if we go back and we need to re verify our account, then the account info should not exist. So let's fix that.
So if we come back here, before we verify the account, we want to set verified accounts to be null. So that's the first thing we want to do. So now let's try that again. Let's close this. Have this send bunny. So this is meant to be nine. So if we type nine, we get the account almost immediately. If we go back and type zero, then we get this. So that's looking good. So one more thing we need to do is we need to be able to show the amount field once the account has been verified. So let's do that. So just like with the account number, we are going to copy this. And we are going to show this only if we have a verified account. So we are going to have verified account and, and we have this. Now format it. And this will be the amount. So here I'm going to change this to amount. And here this is going to be data dot amount. Also, we're going to have place with that here. So we can have enter amount that that works. So we don't need an input ref for this. And we are good. So the idea as well needs to be amount. Yep. So we can enter amount because we verified an account. So if we change this, the amount goes alongside the verified information. So we are good on that note. So let's try the second account, which is this. Send money. Yeah, we have this. So other information we can obtain from the account would involve the currency type. So we can also have more validations with that. Actually, let's give the amount some space from the top. So let's have class name here and have MT5. Yeah, so now that is adding some space. And maybe we can color the account name and maybe make it smaller. So let's do that. So test blue 500 and tests SM to make it smaller. Yep, so that's looking much more nicer. So like I said, we're going to be rounding up here today. Obviously, we shouldn't be able to send money to ourselves. That's just a waste of operation. Yep, because we have the money already, so why are we sending it? So we're going to have the validation for that on the back end. So until then, bye for now.